Hello everybody, Wayne Davies here from Spectrum Economics. As you can see from behind me, I am at the lake slash park. Um, I haven't made a video here in a while, but I thought it was nice to get out of the house, get away from the old garage where a lot of my stuff has been done in the past. But it's in a pretty bad state there as well, but let's take a look behind me. Um, this is, yeah, this is a really beautiful place to come to. At the moment it is about 5.30 here in the afternoon, so I've got about another hour of daylight, well, decent daylight anyway before it starts getting dark, so fairly good time to make a video if you're out and about. And I'm in Australia, so this is still the summer, and the temperature can get pretty high. At the moment it's not that hot. It feels around 20-ish, and there's a bit of a breeze, so that's good. As you can see my long hair moving a little bit around in that. So anyway, what do I want to talk about today? I want to talk about investing in steam. And as many of you would know, if you've been watching my content, you've been reading my videos, so you've been reading my posts, and in, so you've been reading my posts and watching my videos, you know that I quite often talk about steam and the various aspects of steam and you know tackling with the various things going on with steam. It's it's very exciting for me as an economist to talk about it because it is so new. But today I want to talk to you, if you're not on Steam, as to why you should consider investing in Steam. First off, I'm investing in Steam. You may say that's a bias, but I'm putting my own money there as well because I have confidence in Steam. But anyway, like I said, I, first up, I came here as a content creator. And I came here to share my videos, actually. I'd started on YouTube about a month or so beforehand. I thought, wow, this is great. There's another way I can actually monetize my content. And Steam's also great for blogs too, and I started on that not long afterwards as well. So I got quite a variety of content on here, and it's absolutely perfect for that. And then DTube came out as well, which is another way of sharing videos. So, and I'll talk about that later because there's a number of other what we call decentralized applications that are really great on Steam, and we'll go into that. So, why invest in Steam? For me, to start is is because I enjoyed being here and I want to increase my influence on the platform so I bought some steam that was around after about six months I've been here I bought a little bit beforehand maybe about a hundred dollars worth of tops it wasn't a lot and then I think it was around November 2017 I bought up quite a bit I think it's about 15,000 steam which is close to a dollar at that time so it would put me back about 15,000 so I had a fair amount of confidence at that time that this place was going to do pretty well and well, there was a huge increase in the price at the beginning of January. We'll talk about that in a minute. So it was around a dollar then. So fast forward ahead now to the end of 2018, and I bought up some more steam, actually quite a lot of steam. And okay, it's going to sound bad at first, and the price of steam had actually dropped down to about just over 30 cents. And you think, yeah, okay, you invest, bought it around a dollar, went to 30 cents, it's about 60-70% of the value gone. Well, that's in terms of price. And I don't think that truly reflects the actual value of Steam. So therefore, buying it around 30 cents, I think is actually quite a bargain. Because a lot of things happened in 2018, and a lot of development, and mostly focused around these decentralized applications, which I'll talk about in a minute. So I bought about another 50,000 Steam. So all up, that's taken me up to now about 85,000 Steam, I think it is. And I think I made another smaller investment when it was a bit higher. Almost regret that now. <laughs> it seems like I paid a lot at one point. It wasn't much though, but anyway, all I've got about 85,000 steam, so that's not bad. It's like I said, it's still the price of steam. I think as I'm making this video, is the high 30s, I think up to about 37 cents. It changes all the time, and that's the thing about investing in steam compared to other investments. So let's talk about other investments very briefly. So you're going to make an investment, you can invest it in the stock market property, you can set up your own business, you can invest in cryptocurrency other than Steam, um, you know, like Bitcoin or Ethereum that are more established, or you can invest in Steam, which I'm going to talk about today. So why would you choose Steam over these other cryptocurrencies? And, you know, and you don't necessarily have to be a content creator. So, okay, so how do you actually invest in Steam, first of all? I'll get into that one. Use this a second. Um, we have a site known as Block Trade. So if you set up an account on Steam, there's several ways of doing that. You can do it with Steam.com, or you can do it with one of the various apps. And I think some of them are free, some of them you have to pay for. The ones you pay for, you think you get it immediately, and the ones that are free, I think it could be a bit of a wait. But anyway, so if you're going to buy Steam, there's um, a site known as Block Trades, and this is what I use to get my Steam. It's very 
very, very easy. Um, if you have another cryptocurrency like Bitcoin or Ethereum, you can actually use blockchains to buy Steam directly. And there's an actual link in your wallet to just do that, and it's very simple to do so. So, for me, investing was a logical choice because I'm a content creator. And that's great, but not everyone is a content creator, and I want to emphasize on that in this post. Though, to be honest with you, you could be an investor, and you could be you know, creating a bit of content here and there just for the fun of it, which is all cool. But there are various options for people that don't create content. And the first one, first and foremost, I think could be the most obvious, is curation. So if you buy Steam, you can power up to Steam Power. So immediately, once you have Steam Power, actually earning interest there's not a lot of interest I think it's about one percent a year roughly yeah, roughly about one percent a year so it's not a lot but you can also earn some additional money by curating content and that is where you use your influence to actually look for good posts and you can give upvotes every time you upvote you get a percentage of that upvote back to you so if, for example if your upvotes were two dollars creation rewards is about 25 percent you get 50 cents back if it's a really well-timed upvote, you pick some great content, other people upvote, maybe you could get 70, 80 uh, cents back from that $2. So, there's some incentive to actually, so if you're not a content creator, you're an investor, you just want to come here, you want to watch some great videos, read some great blogs, listen to some great music, you just give that an upvote and you actually earn. So instead of um, paying for content, like you've got Netflix and stuff like that, you can actually earn from curating content because in effect, curation is important because you're helping the better content rise to the top, and that's how you would use your influence. Another thing that is important as well is to try and get your name out there, and um, sometimes it's good to just have a look around who are the key influencers on the platform. So you'll see uh, witnesses, for example, and they're very easy to find. There's a witness tab you can click on, and you can go there and find out what they're doing, and it's important to to actually upvote witnesses because they have an important role in terms of keeping the blockchain going and they what they call this uh, uh, what do we call that? time checking is it or stamp uh, and also they um, involved with hard forks as well which is like significant changes to the blockchain and you want the right people there approving these or maybe disapproving if the you know, development is not favorable so it's good to keep in touch that way you can also discover content if you're using Steam Pink, Steam Peak is actually pretty useful because you can actually save topics. So if you have a particular interest in something, like I have an interest in, I've got down here, economics, news, philosophy, Steam it and contests, conspiracy, I can just save those and then when something pops up, I'll be alerted regarding that topic. I can go there and look through them and um, start uploading them. You can also save users as well. So if there's a particular user you like, you can save it on Steam Peak and you can then make sure that you follow them. Of course, it's easy to miss content, and another thing you can do is use uh, auto curation. So you follow particular authors, and I've got here several authors here. So what you do is um, you select the author, determine what percentage upvote you want to give them, and set a timing. There's a bit of risk on that in the sense that some authors don't always produce content to the same standard. So if you don't want to miss upvoting someone, it's good to use um, auto upvotes, but you should also check in to make sure that these people are maintaining that standard. And I think people sometimes don't do that. Also helps you to time it as well, make sure you get in early, such as around I think, the 15 minute mark at the moment. Another thing that you can do with your Steam Power is you can delegate it to someone. And there's a lot of options in terms of delegating. One of them is to um, delegate to a DAP. I'll talk about that in a second. Another one is to delegate to a bot. That is something that people are going to push you towards. I would recommend against delegating to a bot. Essentially, delegating to a bot and then the bot upvotes content based on people's bids or based on people buying votes. So your Steam Power could be used to upvote content that is of very low quality or content that isn't particularly good and not helpful to the platform and doing so would actually damage your investment so I'd recommend against that you could delegate maybe a small amount of your steam power to that because it has quite a good returns in terms of returns of coins though it's not a particularly good return to your investment altogether if the better content 
is being pushed out of the way through these votes. Um, another thing is you can delegate to curators. That isn't particularly popular at the moment because curation rewards are pretty low, but it's still an option. If you find someone who's a very good curator, you can actually delegate to them and they will do the curating for you. You could be a very busy person, you don't have time to do it yourself. You can make an arrangement that you know they get, like, say, 22%. So let's say they get 5%, sorry, of the curation rewards, you get to keep 20 they won't mind because they're using a steam power for some influence and you still get some return on that as well. Another option is to follow a curation trail. So that's some similarities to delegating to a curator, but what you do is instead is you find what we call a curation trail to follow and you follow that and then whenever the person who leads the trail upvotes, you'll upvote as well. You can select um, what uh, percentage of upvotes you want to provide and also I think you can select how low you want the steam power to go. We'll talk about the steam power in another video, it's a, it's a lot to get into but it's again that's another way of using influence, you've got to make sure you're following a trail that you're comfortable with. As I mentioned uh, bots, <laughs> uh, another option actually what you can do is if you're not delegating to a bot is you could still sell votes and have a bit more control on that. You earn a little bit less money, but there's options to boost that and smart market. So you can sell votes to particular users that you think have fairly good content. And uh, I'll have to show you one day, it's not in this video, but I actually have an account with um, smart market. I sell some votes there. And, uh, I have quite a long blacklist of users that I refuse to sell my votes to. So I'm also following several white lists as well. So. I try and make it a point that I'm not going to sell my votes to anyone who's not creating good content. And what I do as well is I check up on the votes that I've sold to make sure that they're going to content that's good. If I see something and think, well, this person, you know, maybe he's abusing bots or whatever, I pull it, a blacklist. It doesn't take a lot for me to do that. Because uh, I'd rather my votes that are sold is actually going to go to someone who, who's creating good content or just getting out as well. I'm not necessarily pushing the content to the top, but, you know, and selling votes, they, they get a bit out of it as well. We call it a return on their investment to the vote. Okay, so um, another thing as an investor, what you'd want to do as well is just let the world know about Steam because this is what you've invested in. So if you're not creating content yourself and you're upvoting content, I suggest that you use all your other forms of social media to promote this content that you think is really good or talk about it as much as you possibly can, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Reddit, or whatever other minds, medium, etc., etc., what you may be on. It's to spread the word because it has so much potential and I think the world kind of needs to know about it. But you have to be honest as well. It's like I'm talking about this here as well. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is going to be, um, oh no, the next thing I'll talk about is inflation. Okay, so this is something that um, there is a bit of, I think, a bit of misinformation. I don't know if it's still out there. It was, it was out there a few months back, but people thought inflation on Steam was very, very high. Some people thought it was about 100%. I can confirm that now it's considerably less. You can check on Steam Peak. As it is, it's 8.5. Well, that's the intended inflation for 2019. 2018. I have to be straight out honest with this, it wasn't the 8.6% that it was supposed to be because there was some what we call conversion of Steam blockchain dollars back into Steam and we had an excessive amount of Steam blockchain dollars from where we had an explosion in the price in January 2018 and that's contributed to quite an increase in the supply of Steam, higher than it should be and it's around 20 plus percent so that wasn't particularly good, but that's not something that's likely to happen again anyway, uh, or not for a long time anyway, because the amount of steam back dollars has actually gone down considerably. So we should be on track for about 8.5% inflation for 2018. So should be a little bit happier on that front. And again, that's also contributed to the fall in the price as well. Alright, so how am I gonna um, I'm gonna talk about now? I'm gonna talk about the DAPs and 
part of a contest that actually made my advertisement was relating to the DAPs because I think this is the biggest development on Steam. As an investor, this is probably something you want to watch most closely, more than the original Steam it. And we got some great games developed. We got Steam Monsters and we've also got Drug Wars now. Um, we've got some very different things. We've got Active Fit that actually helps people um, earn money while they're doing activities and showing proof of that activity through Fitbit. Actually, we've got a Fitbit on right now. I don't have a lot of counts today. Well, actually, not too bad. I'm up to 4,900. So I'm going to get over my 5,000. And I'm going to be walking with dogs as well when I get back after this video. So, so Active Fit's good and I'm involved with that. There's um, other ones like um, Steam Hunt which is you show off the products that you have and get like a bit of review on that and people upvote you and things like that. So these apps are varied and very diverse and this is going to attract a lot of users. And when you have users, basically investment generally tends to follow and also revenue as well. And you're going to start advertising, I believe many of these apps are. So potentially you could delegate some of your steam power to these apps help them grow and some of them may offer you profit sharing in the form of advertisements that hasn't happened yet but it's something i think is likely to happen steamit.com are actually got advertisements now so the other apps will probably follow at some point as well so that's another reason you should be investing in steam so anyway this um takes me to the end of this um video um Trying to work out here in the park has been a little tricky. Um, I've got my computer here as well, I'm trying to refresh what I have to say. But anyway, uh, thank you for listening. If you're watching this on YouTube, remember to give me a like and uh, subscribe. And if you're watching this on Steemit, give me an upvote, a follow, and a restate. Very nice. Thank you very much, guys, and uh, we'll be seeing you soon.